In this demonstration we're going to look at how we can configure Windows Server 2012 to be an iSCSI target. This will allow me to have shared storage for clustering, maybe it's for virtual machines. So what we're going to do here is we've just come into Server Manager. On Server Manager we're going to add roles and features. This is then going to bring us into Wizard, so we'll select Next. The installation type will be role based or feature based installation, so Next. In the case of my server selection I'm going to do this on LON Serve DC1, so Next. And then what we're going to do here is we need to just modify some of our server roles. So we'll expand the file and storage services. We'll expand the file and iSCSI services. And then we'll scroll down just so we can see all the options. We're going to make this server an iSCSI target server. Select our next button. Not going to bother with any additional features, so we'll select next. Then what we'll do is we'll select install. And what we'll do is we'll leave this to install, so we'll pause the presentation and return back once the installation is complete. So as we can see, now we've installed the iSCSI targets, so we'll just close down the installation wizard. Next thing we want to do here is we just want to create two iSCSI virtual disks and an iSCSI target. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to come across to our file and storage services. Then within our file and storage services, what we're going to do here is just click on iSCSI. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to come in and do some configuration. So what we'll do here is we'll just click on tasks. And then within tasks, what we want to do next is we just want to actually create a new iSCSI virtual disk. This then brings us into a little wizard. So all we're going to do here is we're just going to work through our wizard. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're just going to select our C drive. And then on our C drive, this is what we're going to use to actually create the virtual hard disk on. So then we'll select next. In the case of the iSCSI virtual disk name, we're going to call this iSCSI disk one and select next. In the case of the size here, we're just going to make this five gigabytes. And what we're also going to do here as well is we're just going to leave it as a fixed size and select next. For the iSCSI target, we're going to create a new iSCSI target and select next. We're going to call this on serve two and select next. And specifying our access servers, we're just going to select add. And all we're going to do here is we're just going to put in the IP address of the server that's going to attach through to this iSCSI target. At this point here, we're just going to enter a value for the selected type. We're going to click on our little drop down, go for IP address, and we're just going to specify the IP address of the server, which in our case is 172.16.0.22. And this is just setting up who can actually access this target. So we'll select OK at this point here. On the specify access servers, yep, we're happy with that, so we'll select next. On the authentication, we're not going to bother with the chap, so we'll select next. Then what we're going to do here, just quickly read through the summary and click create. So what this is now going to do, this is now going to go away and create my iSCSI virtual hard disk. It's all done, so we'll select close. We're now going to create a second disk, so we'll come to tasks again. And then within here we'll go for another new iSCSI virtual hard disk. Again we'll select the C drive and select next. We'll give it a name, so we'll call this iSCSI Disk 2, and select Next. Virtual hard disk size, we'll go for 5 gig again, and again we'll select Next. Then in case of the sign, we'll just use an existing target name, and select Next, and select Create. And select Close. And what we've now done is we've created two virtual iSCSI disks. The next thing we need to do really is now we've configured our target. Next thing to do is configure the initiator. But that's the end of this demonstration of configuring Windows Server 2012 to be an iSCSI target. Thank you.